The religious leaders who question Jesus in today's gospel passage had likely heard him use the shepherd metaphor for himself before. Tired of that metaphor, tired of metaphor, period, the religious authorities ask Jesus, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus' frustration becomes clear in his response. I have told you, and you do not believe. The religious leaders who long to know whether or not the Messiah is in their midst can't hear the answer to the very question that they have been asking. God bless him. <laughs> Harold, I'm not sure the mics are on. Would you mind flipping me? While we have a break. Ah, there we go. Good. <laughs> they couldn't hear it. That's where we were. <laughs> Likewise, the risen and living Christ stands before us in the words and deeds of Scripture and in the other members of Christ's body, the Church, he announces continually to us who he is. Yet still, sometimes, we can't hear. In moments of terror and isolation, when all that was familiar suddenly seems unfamiliar, sometimes we just can't hear. When frustration piles upon frustration, when disappointment piles upon disappointment, when tragedy piles upon tragedy, sometimes we just can't hear the very voice we long to hear the most. When we feel most beset by trials of this great ordeal, sometimes it seems as though we just can't hear Jesus' love and reassurance. Are you the God of love, Jesus, or are you not? Just tell us, just show us plainly. Yet even in the midst of terror and tragedy, it is possible 
to hear Jesus' message, the message of the risen Christ's love for us. But it takes practice. Our prayer lives are our... <laughs> One time in my last parish in Plymouth, which was right on the river, I mean, our church was literally across the street from the river, we were having the national, um, national boat trials for some kind of boat <laughs> racing. And it had gotten rained out on Saturday, and so the mayor comes to my house right across the street from the church on Sunday morning and says, we're going to have to have it today during church. And it was, you think this is loud, it was the Lord be. <laughs> We just took lots of breaks that day like we're doing now. Okay, let's try this for a third time. Our prayer lives are our first and, first and foremost ways of listening. Yet often our prayer, if you're anything like me at least, turns simply into these long lists of petitions and thanksgivings. But what of listening in prayer. Doesn't the psalmist write, my soul in silence waits? We long to hear what we think Jesus' message is. However, even such seemingly righteous longing can impede our listening for Jesus' message as he intends for it. The religious leaders in today's gospel lesson passage hoped for a Messiah with all their beings. Yet the Messiah for whom they waited was not the Messiah that God intended. They hoped for a Messiah who would be a political leader as well as a spiritual guru. They hoped for a military general who would again make clear in the eyes of all the world the favored status of the Jewish people. But the Messiah that Jesus proclaims himself to be in his works simply doesn't match up with the religious leaders' expectations. The good shepherd, as Jesus calls himself, is not the Jewish political and military powerhouse they wanted. The religious leader's own expectations and hopes thus impaired their perception of Jesus. They simply couldn't hear what he was telling them because their own inner voices drowned him out. How often do our desires for who we want Jesus to be deafen us to who he proclaims himself to be? Our hope for a Jesus whose love for us translates into personal success can make us unable to see Jesus calling us to share and care for the needs of others. Our hope for a Jesus who shares our morals blinds us to the Jesus who surprised everyone by the kinds of people he ate with, prostitutes, sinners, tax collectors. <clears throat> of the Jesus who dared to break all social mores and show his love for people from unsuitable walks of life, from misunderstood parts of society, from groups of people deemed unclean and even heretical. Our hope for a Jesus whose love for us translates into a life free from trials 
makes us forget the Jesus who hung on a cross for us and who calls us to take up our own crosses and follow him. Listening for Jesus certainly isn't always or even often easy. Sometimes it seems as though we just can't hear what we want to hear. But perhaps that's the very problem. Perhaps in order to hear Jesus, we have to let go of what we want. We need to let go, perhaps, of what we expect. Let go of ourselves. Hearing Jesus as he proclaims and shows himself to be requires faith. But faith is not something that we can will ourselves into having. We can't just say to one another, if you just have more faith, well, that's not helpful at all. If I could have more faith, I would. You can't will yourself. It comes only as a gift from the outside. And the only way to make room for that gift is by making room within ourselves. And so for our part, we make ourselves open, open to the possibility of hearing Jesus declare himself to us. We desire to know him. That part we can do. And then that desire creates a way in for him. It opens our eyes and it unstops our ears. If we make room for the Spirit to fill us and to give us faith, well, then we still need to be prepared for that faith to lead us where we least expect to go, to be the person we least expected to be, to do the things we least wanted to do. In our baptisms, we are made sheep of Christ's own fold. And like sheep, we know our shepherd's voice when we hear it. Our Lord, our shepherd, continually announces to us his Messiahship and his love for us all. And all we have to do is listen.